This time, chops away, Ginger son. I head to the old Eastern Block. Done that, that'll do. On a World War II shopping spree. Leavers, pedals! You're off your head, you are. The twins turn rust into gold as they make 70-year-old tank parts as good as new. Let's go. And I bring out the big guns. Whoa! As I attempt to drum up business with a mega-rich Russian. Whoa! Whatever he wants, we're going to have. Oh, yeah! I'm Bruce Crompton. Ah! I'm by Fix Up and Sell Old Military Kit. Bruce is my right hand man. Look at these! He keeps an eye on the cash. See my face drop? Ian's the weapons expert. As an ex-para, he knows his stuff. Twins, Nick and Phil, run the workshop. There's nothing they can't fix. Oh! Is he a nutter or what? Oh, 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 have a look. Thanks. I'll come back to you. Lovely. Yeah, let me come back to you, mate. Cheers. Bye. The Russians, the Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. In this business, you've got to know who the big buyers are, and they don't get much bigger than the Russians. Phil, Nick, yeah, listen, you ain't going to believe this one. The blooming Russians are coming, right? <laughs> one of them Oli Gherkins, right? Because he's a Chelsea geezer. No, he ain't one of them wag football geezers. He's another guy called Slava, right? But he's got loads of money, mate. He's bought, in the last year, 300 military vehicles. If he's spending money, I want him to spend some money with us, right? So what, is he coming here? He ain't coming here yet, but by the time I've got into him, I'm going to get him to come up here to see our collection and see what we've got. So what does he want, then? We don't know, I don't know, but whatever he wants, we're going to have, or I'm going to supply him. I'll come back and be in touch with you. All right. So you standing by, then? Oh, absolutely. Hello. Standing by. Are you standing by? Yeah, I'm standing by the tank. All oh, right. OK. The rich Russians flown in specially for a huge military event down in Dorset. Tank Fest is a magnet for collectors from all over the globe, and I've arranged to meet him there. Russian oligarch Vyacheslav Len, or Slava for short, is one of the biggest military buyers out there, and I've got to land him as a customer. It was roasting here yesterday, honestly, but it was very good. Slava's an interesting geezer. Although he's Russian, he also speaks German, so he's brought along Patrick, his German translator, who speaks English. I hope you're following this. How was the flight? Good? Yeah. The weather yeah. in Russia good? Hot, cold? No, no, uh, warm and very schön. No rain. Hot, no rain. I can see why he's come here. There's loads of great stuff. A tiger, British Centurions, and American M5s. The plan is to stop him spending money here and get him back to mine instead. I just need to find out what he's after and tempt him with the right bit of kit. Heads are for me very interesting. Heads are very interesting for me. Why didn't you tell me? The one that you're looking at here is nice, but the best Hetzer in the world is at my house. Mine is perfect. Original engine, original gearbox. Turn the key, press the button, boom. The Hetzer is what the Nazis called a tank destroyer, and it had a unique remote control machine gun which allowed the gunner to stay inside the tank and fire via a periscope. Also known as the Jad Panzer 38, these things were deadly. Oddly enough, Hetzer means beta, which is just what I'm using mine for. I'm not really looking to sell mine. It's the only original working Hetzer left in the world and worth about half a million. But it's so rare, I'm hoping Slava won't be able to resist coming to have a ride in it. If you're interested, maybe we can make an arrangement for you to come up and see it. Uh, the cannon is functional and the machine the gun auch, yeah? function. The machine gun mount on the top works, we fire it, it's perfect. Then could we come today? <laughs> no, no, oh, I've got time out, time out. <laughs> we can arrange it for next week or something or whatever. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. All right. Hello, mate, it's Bruce. 
bagged this rich Russian fuel, I've got to offer him the ride of a lifetime in my Etza. I've told him it's in beautiful, Nick, and it drives like a dream. Well, it steers like an old shopping trolley. It don't matter, mate. The important thing is... And he's really interested in the gun. And Which gun? The main gun? No, the MG gun on the top, the MG34. That's got to run perfectly. He hasn't got one on it. Well, you've got plenty of time to get that done. That's why I'm phoning you in an hour. Listen, mate. He's gagging over it. Don't muck about. Let's just get it sorted out, mate. Charming. I've been a war historian and collecting for over 30 odd years. And back at my warehouse, I've got about 50 original bits of kit that might interest Slava. But there's one thing in particular I know he's looking for. And that's a World War II German Army vehicle known as a 251 half track. It's called a half track because it's got half wheels and half tank tracks. This made it very effective across almost any terrain. The basic 251 was just a chassis. Then the top half of the vehicle was adapted to suit different purposes. It could be armour plated, open topped to carry troops, supplies, or have special mounts to carry cannons. 15,000 were built, but very few have survived. As it happens, I have a rusty 251 chassis. It doesn't look much, but it's a start. What do you yeah. have? Well, it's a, you know, on the whole, it's quite a good chassis. Uh, tracks are rubbish. We definitely need to do something with those. I want him to see this being built up as it goes, right? Right, okay. Because then people could see that we don't cut corners. It's Sorry. done perfectly. So the plan is to sell the chassis to Slava with a promise to create a vehicle around it using authentic 251 parts. For me, it's money in the bank. For him, it's a custom-built, bespoke 251. But first, I've got to clean up the chassis and quickly acquire some genuine 251 parts. And in Germany, I know just the man who might have some. Mario, it's Bruce. Hello, mate, I'm here. I parked out the front of your shed. All right, OK, I'll wait round the front here. Five minutes, OK? We'll just wait for you. Mario Schooneman deals in lots of stuff, but he's known for his passion for tracked vehicles. He's got a Hetzer, but he's not as good as mine. Have a look, dig eye. Look at him. Look, he's gunning that thing and all, mate. He's going to go over it. No, 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 no. Yeah, is he? Oh, oh, oh. What is he doing? He's got me rock like a nutter. Now, is that a proper entrance or what? Mario! Hey, Wolf. Is that the wife's car? Oh! You're off your head, you are. Come on, please. Come on, come on, come on. I know you shouldn't accept lifts from strange men, but he's driving a Hector. I ain't getting on it, bros. Come on! But after what he's Come just done... On, you old car. Are you serious? Come on! Don't touch that! Come on! 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 We've started work on the Hetzer. But straight away, we've got a dilemma. Where the big gun meets the body of the vehicle, there's meant to be a heavy protective metal guard called a Sauerkopf or pig's head. Bruce has two. We need to work out which is the most authentic for his Hetzer. They're different shapes and we don't know which one to use. We've got this one here, which is obviously the type you normally see on yeah, most see of them. Them, see them a lot. Then this one here is really something strange. It's quite a different thing. It's a lot heavier, much chunkier. After Germany invaded Czechoslovakia, they forced the Skoda factories to produce Hetzers. They were a new design of tank destroyer, and the first ones off the production line had a heavier Salkov, but they quickly switched to the lighter version. To make our Hetzer more valuable, it must have the right Salkov. Yeah, Nick, come and have a look at this, see what you think. Those versions there are very rare. Very rare ones, which is very much like the one we've got here. I'll tell you what, come and have a look at this. Yeah. Um, I can tell you it's definitely a Skoda because it's 323 in right. the first part of the number. OK. Uh, 010, which is number 10. Nazi vehicles have no manufacturer's name, just a number. 
They thought if we didn't know who built them, we wouldn't know which factories to bomb. Now, of course, we know what the numbers mean. So this one was number 10 built from the Skoda factory. Right. Bruce's Hetzer is one of the very first off the Skoda production line so it should have one of the heavier Salkoffs. That's fantastic. I mean, if that is the right one, put so much value on the thing, Bruce would be absolutely over the moon with that. If I'm right, and this is an original heavy Salkoff, it should fit the Hetzer like a glove. This steel monster weighs over 350 kilos, so we need the gantry winch to get it up to the height of the barrel. So far, so good. The Salkoff slots over the gun barrel, but will it fit against the body of the tank? If you've done all your research, it should fit, shouldn't it? Yeah, no pressure. It's all lined up. Well, now to find out whether this Salkoff's the right one. <laughs> it's a moment of truth. Well, that looks good. It's absolutely perfect, is it? Not only do we have one of the first Hetzers, it now has its original Salkoff. It's the little things that make a difference. No, not so little. Well, uh, the, the big heavy things that make a difference. Leave this to me. Mario, 5,000. Forget it. You see my face drop? I need this next week. Normally it takes three months. I've got a Russian buyer hot for a German half-track known as a 251. I've got a chassis and wheels, but I need a body and parts. So I've come to a German dealer called Mario on a fishing trip, but I don't want to let him know that's what I'm after, or he'll bump up the price. Oh, 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 righty, right. Chocks away, ginger, son. I'm in here. I feel like a jeweler. Lovely. There's shipping containers everywhere filled with amazing stuff. This place is a treasure trove. Oh, but, oh listen, I need oh, a few of these. Oh, that's where we are. Now, believe it or not, this is not a normal oil can, because obviously with the lack of materials during the war, they started to produce stuff out of cardboard, and that's actually an oil bottle, and it goes in most vehicles inside. Unbelievable. And? Oil's inside. Oil's inside, that's right? Unbelievable. But you never that's find them in, oh, yeah. This is like a bottle of Bordeaux from the 17th century. This is as rare as rock and horse, right? Wow. Cardboard was used for fuel containers, even on planes. It was light, so planes could fly as much as nine hours longer. And if the planes came down in enemy territory, the cardboard tanks broke and couldn't be reused. What sort of money, Mario? What do you reckon? 150. What, pence? 150 euros. Does that run a Ferrari or a Porsche? Listen, I ain't even going to quibble about that. 150 euros, I'll have that, mate. Oh, hang on. What you got here? Look at the bottom of them. That is a rubber tyre. So they've worn the, the sole out. So basically, Off right at the end tire. of the war, where they'd run out of materials and everything, they were taking old vehicle tyres, cutting out yeah. a sole, and they were basically repairing their shoes in the field. As it happens, a German army doctor also used tyres to make the first Doc Martin boots. Mate, they're awesome. They're absolutely unique. That's historical. Right, so come on, Mary, how much are you do me something on these? I think 50... Uh, 58. Uh, for each. Uh... It's 100 euros for the two. 100. Okay. Mary, okay, then, we'll do a swap, bro. No, no. No? Like, it's cheaper than you buy, the shoes you buy. They'll do to me, mate. Don't <laughs> worry about that. Okay, lovely, Mario. Cheers, mate. That's great. Nothing else in there, or can we have a look next door? This piece, I think, is good for you. What is that? Uh, it's an indicator for a 251. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, lovely. Now, this is what I'm after. A half-track directional indicator. Right, what happens is a little chain goes on here. It goes above the steering wheel, OK? And as you turn the steering wheel, it's a directional indicator, OK, so that you know, because of the vias of limited view, it shows you which way you're steering. Left, right and zero. It's as simple as that. All right, Mario, yeah, we'll have that. You know the price? No, how much? The real price is 1,000 euros. 1,000 euros? You see my face drop? Hoose may not like it, but it's a decent price. Hoose, it's rare. All right, we'll have that. 
Thanks, Mario. Cheers. In total, I've got the bottle, indicator and shoes for €1,250, Euros, which is a good result. Can we go and have a look next door? Yes, yes. Lovely. As one battered door closes, another one opens in Mario's military wonder. Ah! ah! Is that what I think it is? You've got 251 track here. Mario, any chance of them being sold? I need a spare set of tracks. I need them for myself, for my own project, for a restoration of a 251. Sandy, like a yes to me. Normally it's uh, 3,000 euros. 3,000 euros? Yeah. If I look desperate for 251 stuff, the price might go up. But if I bundle a few things together, I might get it down. What I have here is a, is a bridge for a 251, for a Pioneer version. It's an engineering bridge, right, that goes on the 251, right? German Pioneer troops adapted their 251s to carry these bridging ramps. These steel and wooden ramps withstood a battery from thousands of tonnes of heavy vehicles crossing over them. They were used to destruction so very few survived. It's just the kind of thing Slava might be interested in to complete his 251. Nice piece of kit. I mean, it's a bit knackered, I've got to tell you, but it's repairable. For sale, Mario? Yes, it's possible. What sort of money? Expensive? 3,000 euros. Oh, 3,000? 3,000 3, euros? With, with original reward. That's about 2,700 pounds. Why is it so dear? because it's a rare bit of kit. It's a bridging equipment and it goes on a vehicle. It will go on the 251. Well, 2,700 pounds for that. The least you can do is just chuck them two rusty spare tyres in, because he'll find something to do with them, won't he? Are they the 251, yeah? Yeah, let's have a look at these. OK, right, here, I'll pick one of them up. Go on, pick let's it up. Pick up. I ain't picking up just like... Watch this. Here, I'll look. If I can do it, you can do it. Yeah. Where you go, pick it up. Yeah, good. Lovely. Yeah. Right, lovely. There's a reason these tyres are heavy. They're almost solid rubber. Right, listen. This is a Galinda tyre. Basically, it's bulletproof. So if you're driving along in an armoured vehicle or a combat vehicle, the bullets can't be shot. There's no inner tube in here. What sort of money can we do on these? 1,500 for each. 1,500 euros. That's 1,300 and odd. So we're talking with three grand at the tyres, three grand at the bridge. Yes. And how much for the track? 3,000. Leave this to me. Mario? Euros, yeah? 3,000 euros yes. for the track. Yeah. 3,000 euros for the one bridge. Yes. Yeah? And 1,500 for these. Another 3,000. Yes. 5,000. No. 5,000? It's a bad idea. It's a lot of money, mate. I'll oh. pick the tyre up for you. 7,000 euros, that's all. We're meeting halfway? No. Don't make me cry. 7, I'm at 7,000? Would you be happy with 7,000 euros? Yours. Yeah? Yours. Yeah, that's okay. Mario, I'm happy. Result. A bolt by wheels, track, and a bridge for 7,000 euros. But they'll add a lot more than that to the value of my 251. And with the money spent on the other stuff, all in all, I've spent 8,250 euros, having knocked Mario down from over 10 grand. I've saved myself nearly 1,500 quid. By the time Phil and Nick's got their hands on that stuff, spent a few quid on it, right, we're going to turn around at least another 60 grand. We've had a good day, trust me. All right, can we go home then? Of course we can go home. We'll stay, yeah. But don't get in the car with them dirty boots on. All right, back in the workshop, Batman and Robin are getting my Hetzer primed for Slava, the Russian, to test drive. Right. Give it a bit of choke. Yeah. Double trouble. The Hetzer engine is not authentic and it's not working. And uh, nothing's happening. I've told Slava my Hetzer is the best in the world, but at the moment it ain't even moving. I need a genuine reconditioned Hetzer engine, sharpish. So I've made a detour to the Czech Republic to hook up with Ian. We're foregoing the usual delights of Prague and heading for an old tank factory instead. Long way to come for an engine, isn't it? Yeah. Hello, Bruce. Hello, yeah, that's me. <laughs> You're Constantine, yeah? Yes, yes. And Constantine, nice I'm to Bruce. meet you finally. Hello, oh, yeah, thank nice you. We didn't know if we come to the wrong Constantine place. Appelt and Paul Circle are incredible engineers who specialise in restoring old tank engines. 
After the war, German tank engines were reused by the communists here in the Eastern Bloc to run farm equipment even up to the present day, which is why engines have survived. Happily, the guys here have an old Hetzer engine. Sadly, it is not good to go. What is the problem with it? It has to be completely overhauled. The cylinders, you yeah. have to manufacture new cylinders. I need this next week. How quickly? Can we have it in a week? Normally it takes three months. Minimum. Yes. We must be able to negotiate to make it do quickly. No, no, it's it, it, it not possible. There is a plenty of work. Also, yeah. also, the pieces have to be manufactured. Yeah. We manufacture you have all the pieces. Stopped, no, or? no, no, they have to be manufactured, especially for this engine. Three months. That's worse than my local garage. Still want it though. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Okay. All right. We'll do it. Now the big question is. How much? We're the going to be price about uh, overhauling of this type of engine is approximately 35,000. Do you have a chair? I need to <laughs> sit down. 35. Uh, I mean, I'm thinking more. 25. 25,000 is a good price for a complete overall? No, no, no. it's not possible to it's do it for engine. this money. No? no, no. You it... must be able to come down a little bit on something. 25, 26. The, the least we could really do is 30,000. 30, 30. 30. Done. Done? Okay. Okay. Deal. Lovely. And one other thing a crate of Czech beer. Okay. okay. All right. Fine, fine. <laughs> Job done. Thank you. Lovely. This new engine won't be ready for Slava's visit. So I'm relying on the twins to work their magic and get the Hetzer's current engine running. This is a ghost town. It's like a thunderbird. Let's go. Yeah! While I'm in Prague, I want to meet up with a dealer called Yarda. He's got a hangar on a military airfield that's been disused since 1991. You've got to travel to pick up military kit. They didn't call it a world war for nothing. It touched every corner of the globe. And that's why there's a worldwide community of collectors and dealers. This is a former Soviet bloc center of administration for the Air Force called Milovici which is ghost town. Now he's told us just to get here, get through the gate, walk to the airfield, right, or the runway, and then look for some bomb-proof craters. And he said there's a few of them, and he's in number 38. Look at the size of this place. That's huge. I ain't seen a runway this. Well, I ain't seen one this big. Certainly so nothing lands. There are Russian MiG fighters based here during the Cold War. They sat in these bomb-proof hangars, protected by metre-thick steel doors. Mate, there's quite a few of them. Yeah, yeah. But it's got to be one. It can't be that far. There he is. It's, that's him. Yarda! Hello, Yarda. How the devil oh, are you, hello, my Bruce. friend? All right? All right? This is Ian. Pleased to meet you. All right? Yarda. Hello. How's your English? Improved? But I really so little from I don't know, cash, money, deposit. About as good as my Czechoslovakian. <laughs> Is this your building, yeah? Yes. Can we have a look? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. come. Oh, it's like Thunderbirds, look. Impressive, very, very good. Straight away, tucked away at the back of the hangar, I spy an OT-80 armoured personnel carrier. Interesting vehicle and a Cold War classic. It's running. Yes, have a little problem with clutch or running, yes. Right, OK. It's, uh, but it's complete, yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Can we look inside, yeah? Oh, you've got all kinds of junk in here as well. Inside, what do I find? But a load of Luftwaffe gear, which I'm really interested in. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Is that a parachute harness? 
Yeah. You've got a little Aladdin's cave here, Yarda. Yeah, yeah, go on, try it, try it. Listen, because uh, I'd be interested in it. If that's right, I'd definitely be interested in it. A bit skinnier in 1940. Oh, fits, yeah. How do you know that's a, 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 a pilot's one or a... Ain't a pilot's one. No? No, it's an RZ20. It should say it on it. It'll have uh, the Germans, as always. There'll be something on there. There you go. Sprung, schum, schirm, für falschen Truppen. Parachute for paratroopers. This is a bit special. When you land in enemy territory, you want to be free of your chute as quickly as you can. And the RZ-20 was the first ever quick-release parachute. Price on this? I will sell complete this uh, Luftwaffe part. Yard has picked up a few sell tricks since I last saw him. He's forcing me to buy more. Let's see what else he's got in there. Yeah, what's that? It's an overall, isn't it? Oh, it's a pilot suit, yeah? Yeah, it's a heated pilot suit. What do you mean, heated? They actually... They... Has it got the... Uh... What's that? So this is a, a pilot helmet, yeah? It's a... Kopf hole bar. Yeah? Can you imagine? Two ears, top of the head, and your face is here. And then round the back, you've got the cable going in for the comms. This is a... Uh... Heated, did you say, yeah? It might be heated. Some of them got plugs in, and they run electric cables down. Because obviously this is a, a cold weather pilot suit. Bomber crews flew at high altitudes, where temperatures were well below freezing. So before pressurised cabins, they needed heated suits to survive. God, you'd sweat to death in that thing. Look at that. Bear What's skin. That? Is it bear or rabbit skin? You nice see a thing. rabbit like that, mate, yeah. I'd run. So, Yarda, this piece, the suit and the parachute harness. Yes. What is the price for the three? 1800. 1800 euros, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. Can we do something on that? Say, I don't know. 2000. <laughs> You're getting good at this game, aren't you? I was going to say 1200. 1200. That's a 16. Six, 16 is minimum. 15 and we got a deal. No, OK, OK. 15. 15. All right. right. OK. Stick that away as well. So the parachute harness, pilot suit and hat are mine for 1,500 euros. That's 1,250 quid. But back in the UK, they could fetch double that. Right, Yarda, mate. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. All right, thanks for your time and thanks for the material. I'll be in touch. Come on, mate. Cheers. See, See you later. It's been a great trip to the Czech Republic, but now I need to make sure everything's on track for Slava's visit. Bruce wants to sell a 251 half-track chassis to this Russian bloke, but right now it looks a right old mess. It's got to be stripped right down and sandblasted. Let's slip this drive unit off. Okay. Some of these are loose, aren't they? Let's loosen this. One more. Oh. Someone's been adding bits to this 251 chassis. They're not original, so they've got to come off. The thing's too big to sandblast here, so it's got to be sent off to specialist sandblasters. Meanwhile, we we'll turn our attention to the Hetzer engine. All right, we'll get it going then. Yeah. Pump the fuel and see what we get. Yeah, that's coming up all right. Yeah? Yeah. You feel it? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, OK. Let's see what we've got. Doesn't get any easier getting in this thing. No. Nothing's happening. Oh, so, we've got no power. No power. Whether it's a tank or a car, if it's not starting, check the battery. Right, you hold, you hold that bit. Yep. Red to red. The red is good idea. Oh, 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 oh God. God. Mm -hmm. All right. What have we got? 12.4. That's all right. That's good. What's wrong with that then? It's got to be something else then. So the battery's fine. Then we notice something. Is that earth strap off? Oh, crikey, yeah. Yeah. Well, well the that's battery's the... not earth, it's not going to go, is it? No, that's the main earth strap for the whole battery. Right. That goes on first. That's on. Good. Right, let's give it a go. 
Sometimes it's the simplest things that fix the problem. Bruce wants the Russians' visit to run like clockwork. I thought, in his absence, I would check the Hetzer is running smoothly. <laughs> Let's go. I'm leaving the helmet on. Move down to the front. Well, Just work your way down. How do you get to the feet, seat? Go feet first. Feet first. Yep, I'm in, mate. You're there. Wow. So this is where the driver would be stationed. That's it, yeah. Mate, this, this is really claustrophobic in here, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Not a lot of people get a chance to actually even sit in here, let alone like me, learn how to drive it. This way, straight on, right. The first problem is actually seeing where you're going. Just come straight on. The chassis of the 251's gone off to be sandblasted. Now the tracks need stripping, cleaning and reassembling. It's going to be a dirty job and a long one. A set of tracks has 111 links. It's full of grease. Yeah, yeah, they usually are. And each link is made up of 11 moving parts. Amazing, all this stuff just, just in one track link. Yeah. yeah, when you're in comparison to this one here, I mean, it's just one pin. The tracks were complicated but incredibly well designed and allowed the 251 to travel much faster than a tank. All oh, this lot to go 10 mile an hour faster. Each part needs to be cleaned up. The first step is to burn off 70 years of congealed grease. The links might look too rusty to use, but sandblasting can work miracles. Good as new. After the bearings, rods and other parts are cleaned, they must be lubed up and put back in exactly as they were. After fixing the link pin, there's just one thing to add. Uh, track rubber. I've got a whole shopping trolley of track rubbers that Bruce has bought over time. You never know when you might need one. Looks good, doesn't it? How many have all we got to do? 110. Oh, that should take a while then, shouldn't <laughs> it? I'm back from my travel, and the 251 chassis is back from sandblasting with a coat of anti-rust paint. Morning. Yeah. 251 chassis, lovely. That looks really, really nice, mate. You happy with it? Yeah. yeah. It's good, nice and straight. It's good. It's come up well. Yeah, really, really well. Yeah. OK, because as you know, the oligarch in Russians yeah. coming here, right? Yeah. So I'm chuffed because he's been able to see this in its bare bones here. That's what's really important to yeah. me. Okay. No, I'm chuffed. That's good. Yeah. This chassis looks like new, and with all the other 251 bits and bobs I've acquired, I'm hoping Slav will be tempted. OK, he's going to be happy with that, mate. Should we get this in then, yeah? Yeah. Do you yeah. want a hand? If you like. I'll go and get the gold. Oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> We can do a deal on everything. Everything's to sell. It's Christmas. Stop, stop, stop. The twins are prepping the Hetzer tank to entertain our visiting Russian oligarch, Slava. Hello. Hiya. Ah, you there? 
Oh, hang on, you got the sow cough on? Yeah. Oh, my giddy arm. I've got to tell you, that's brilliant. Yeah. I mean, we did a bit of research on it with this chassis number being number 10 from the Skoda factory. Right. July, mid-44. Right. That's the sow cough that would be on it. I'm over the moon with that. What's the next thing to do with this now? It's got to come off to be painted. Well done, chaps. Okay. Listen, you're entitled to a box of donuts here now. I'm feeling very, very generous. Yeah, steady on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> box of donuts. The sour cough comes off to be painted. But this slava bloke isn't coming to see the sour cough. He wants to fire the periscope machine gun. But we haven't fitted it and we don't know how it works. The Hetzer MG34 machine gun was designed so that the gunner could fire safely from inside. It was a remote gun. Right. Worked from the inside of the tank. This is the part the guy inside holds. The handlebars. Yeah. The handlebar part. You can obviously turn the gun with that. Mm. It should have a cable on it, which I think fix is to this. That's the trigger. And thing, that is moves it? the trigger from the gun, which yeah. is hanging down through here. Yeah. As far as I can see, the only part we're short is the cable. For the width and strength required, we reckon a bike cable should do nicely. There we go. That'll do. Just hope it's long enough. We lower the periscope down into position to make sure it fits into place and can move smoothly. Right, there you go. Look at that. That's, That's it. Good, isn't it? Now we just need to feed the wire from the trigger on the gun to the trigger on the handlebars inside the tank. Where do you actually need it to be? Just there. Right. Just long enough. Last thing is the MG34. Right, that's not too bad. The tank's ready, I'm ready. And I've got a rich Russian in my sights. Uh, Patrick, left here, left, left. Okay. Left, down here, that's it. Lovely English weather. Yeah. Here we go, toy shop time. The heads there? No, no, you'll see that in a minute. Jam in a minute, jam in a minute. I've got to show you some other bits and pieces in here first. Bruce, do right. you promise? Right, listen, yeah, no, no, I know. Look, listen, but look at all this other wonderful what? stuff first, right? You've seen this one ton D Mag. Yeah. 250 armored Neuer. This is the 259, the radio vehicle. Complete with radios, all original. Came from Belzic. Lovely bit of kit. Nice, yeah. Very nice. Very nice, yeah. 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 All yeah. original, all running. And this is something you'll really enjoy. Cat and Crad. You've seen these Cat and Crad? Been in a lot of films lately. Uh, beautiful piece of kit. This one came from Normandy, and everything on it was original. We've just redone it up, got the engine running and everything. So, but the price of these things has gone ridiculous now. They've gone up to nearly 100,000 euros each. Uh, but oh. obviously, I could do a very good deal on something like this. This would look very good in Russia, you know. Very nice. Yeah. Very it's nice, very yeah. Full original, yeah. Full original, yeah. 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 But let's see what else I can show you before we go and see the piece of resistance. Pack 40. Panzer Abwehrkanone 40. Ganz geile Stückchen. Beautiful yeah. condition. We have two of these. So. Uh, Wet his lips a little bit with this, something he's interested in. Bruce, how much? Ooh, dear, oh dear, let me think. Ballpark will be £20,000, not euros, pounds. We have to talk about that. No, we speak, but I didn't get it. We talk about that, I think I will take it. Yeah? Yeah. That'll yeah. take it. <coughs> I mean, I had a frog in my throat, I meant £30,000. Oh. But no, 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 no. I'll stick a deal is a deal. OK, we can talk about that. We can talk about working that in to see what he thinks about what I'm going to show him next door. Yeah, right? Okay. So he's interested. Yeah, that's Lovely course. jubbly, that'll do with me. Oh, good condition, yeah. We can do a deal on everything. Everything's to sell, it's Christmas. Yeah. And I'm that's Santa Claus. It's no problem. Yes, yeah, no problem. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I could have got more for the Pack 40, and that's annoying. But the goal is to sell him the 251 that doesn't exist yet. I've got 
one more thing to show you before we see the Hetzer. Look at this. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Mm. interesting. Interessant. Yeah. So, two five one. The Rame for uh, 251 er gepanzerte Yep, yeah. 251. We've done a lot of work on the chassis. It's in very good condition. If he's interested, I want to do a deal where I will offer him the chassis as the first payment, then we will build the rest. Mm -hmm. But before I build it or offer it to anybody else, I want to offer it to him first. Are you interested in The chassis at the moment is about £40,000, but we can talk about that. You know, he's interested very hard in, in the chassis, yeah. but the price for learning is a bit too high. I guess 25 is a better price. Ooh, that's a low blow. There's no way I could do it with 25. We've done a lot of work on this chassis as it is now. And obviously the next stage with the armour, we can talk about the prices. And you know, I cut you a good deal on everything I do. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you've got to come up a bit. I mean, yeah. 25 is too low for me. Oh, yeah, when uh, the chassis had Gitribu and Tali Tali, that's 25 is currently the name now. 25, it sounds, for the chassis, I will so complete. I will complete. Well, I'm asking 40, so you've got to come up to at least 30, and we can, that's the baseline they we want can start. But a friendly price, 25. 25 sounds better. 25, all right, we can start with that. It's not what I was hoping for, but it's bought me a long-term customer, and 25 grand is just the starting point. Come on, let's go. Using my Hetza as bait, work to treat. But now, I've got to deliver. Slava wants to drive around and fire the best Hetzer in the world. Whoa! All right. Very it's nice. looking great. Yeah, 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 good. <laughs> but we haven't tested the gun yet. We're gonna drive this thing around and you're gonna get to fire the remote control machine gun, which nobody else has done. Not since the war, probably. As you can see, we've got some prepared targets for you. I think we should get in and have some fun. Oh, we're gonna have fun with this, mate. Drive forward! There we are, showing the second-hand cars who's boss, when suddenly the gun jams. Stop, stop, stop. Up pops Ian to clear the blockage. But the blasted trigger is stuck and it starts firing while he's clearing out the ammo. Draußen. Ist auch keine Christmas, Mike. Oh. Gut yeah. gemacht, Kamerad. Sehr schön. Very good. Sop. There you go. All right. Good. Sehr schön. Fantastic. Herzlichen Dank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slava's had the ride of a lifetime, and the twins have come up trumps fixing the gun. Oh, whoa, whoa. What a right old time I've had. You're off your head, you are. An eastern block picking trip turned into an adventure. This is like a bottle of Bordeaux from the 17th century. I bought a new engine for my Hetzer, yeah. and the twins turned that same Hetzer into one of the rarest in the world. I've sold 45 grand worth of kit to a rich Russian. We can do a deal on everything. Everything's to sell, it's Christmas. Yeah. But most importantly, I've bagged myself an oligarch as a customer. Good. Very good. Fantastic. Herzlichen yeah, Dank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>